Hello everyone, it's Kevin from Creality. I am upgrading my K1. Uh, so the K1 is actually the first printer I ever had. Uh, I was given it when I started working at Creality last year. It was a pretty new printer for them. Uh, so I got one of the early models. If you have one of the early models, you know what that means. Yeah, I had issues, but you can see I've got a camera added to it. So I have done stuff to this printer and I've used it a lot and I learned how to print on it, so you know what that's like too. It's it, it's hard on these poor machines. So, I got an upgrade for it, and I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna show you what the upgrade is, and I'm gonna show you how to install it. So it's an entirely new hot end and heat sink. So to do that, first we gotta take off the cover. If you have a K1, you've taken off the cover before. You know that once you undo those two screws, there's one little plug that powers the fan, the model fan that's in the cover. All right, there's just one screw on each side. So that's simple. And now the next step is I'm gonna take off the extruder. Again, if you have a K1, you have taken apart the extruder. I'm not gonna move the camera for this part just because you've probably done it before. And the extruder is super easy to take off. There's a plastic uh, snap on top at the top. And then you take out two screws here on the right hand side which you can see me doing now with the allen wrench and then there's one screw on the other side and you pull the extruder out and it's on wires and it'll hang there uh, you don't need to take the extruder apart for this uh, you probably you probably don't even have to take the extruder off oh yes you do yeah you do have to take it off because oh one of the greatest things here about this upgrade is getting rid of that little PTFE tube, you know, that little blue tube that's underneath the extruder here. Uh, on the K1, the original K1, after the extruder, there's that small tube of plastic. So the first time you ever took your extruder apart, you probably dropped that piece of plastic or didn't know it was attached to the bottom and it, it's happened to all of us, right? Then you realize, oh my goodness, yeah, I need to keep that tube because when the filament leaves the extruder, it follows that tube into the nozzle. Well, with this new nozzle upgrade, you don't need that tube anymore. Okay, so I finally got the extruder off. And you can see that little blue piece of tube sticking out the back. There, I just took it off. And there it is, yeah. And we don't need that anymore. I, I could have thrown it out right then, but I didn't. I put it down on the print bed with everything else. And I have a big mess of parts there. So, anyway, leave the extruder up there. Doesn't matter, got rid of that little blue tube because this upgrade actually does not require a K1 nozzle anymore. It's going to start using the same nozzle as the K1C, Ender 3 V3, V3 Plus. It's that long unicorn nozzle. It's got the integrated heat break. So uh, it is fantastic. Oh, I, I finally turned off the printer. That was good of me to remember to turn off the printer. Probably should have done that before I started into all of this, but yeah, don't forget to turn off the power. Now, I've unplugged this circuit board now I'm gonna take out these three screws. There's one black one down at the bottom and two silver ones up at the top. This is pretty straightforward, so I'm not gonna bore you with it. I'm gonna skip ahead so you don't have to watch me unscrew screws. There's three screws there, and we've got this circuit board taken off. Sometimes the screws don't fall out. Oh yeah, the screw goes through the circuit board and in through that fan. So that's why it didn't fall out. You remember that when you put it back together. Make sure the two top screws go through the holes in the fan there. Once the two top ones are in, the bottom one will go in. Okay, I'm gonna take off this heat sock. Uh, it is actually necessary because we'll, we'll see later, we have to take out these two screws in the bottom. Okay, let's take that fan, that circuit board right off there. It's got two plugs. Uh, there you can see the fan. I'm gonna keep that, I'm gonna leave that. All right, next bit. There's a few screws holding in uh, the heat sink. So there's two here on the side, one on each side, I should say. So we'll take those off. I find it easier with a little screwdriver than with the Allen keys, but Allen keys come with the printer. Absolutely perfectly fine to use an Allen wrench with that. Uh, not that hole, Kevin. That hole, there we go. Yeah, there's two holes on the side there. Make sure you put the screw back into the right one when you're putting it back. It's the top hole. 
Uh, I made that mistake. I probably will edit out of this video so you don't have to watch me struggle and figure out why the screw's not going into that bottom hole there. These two screws here, holy moly, are they tight. I had to use an Allen wrench on these two and I left marks on my finger. I couldn't get that screw off of there once I got it out. And this one here, I'm using both hands and twisting. This left marks on my fingers. These two are tight. So they'll come. Just be prepared for a little bit of a squeeze there. All right, so there's those four screws holding in the heat sink. And it still doesn't come out. And you know why? It's these two here that are holding in the hot end. I don't know why these screws have to come out, but they do. I guess they go up through the hot end and into the frame. I didn't realize that until I struggled to get that heat sink off there, but you'll see as soon as we, am I turning that the wrong way? I think I'm turning that the wrong way. You guys will tell me in the comments. Oh no, I guess I wasn't. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. I forgot to edit that out. Oh. So there's a little uh, bonus <laughs> if you're actually listening to this whole... I'm turning it the wrong... Oh, now I'm turning the right way. Okay. I can't remember when I did this. There. See, once you take those two screws out, and they're long. Those two screws are long. They're really thin, but <laughs> they're threaded all the way up. So they must go right up into the frame. And there you go. You got the hot end and heat sink out in one piece. And that is trash. I'm throwing that out. I have not used this printer in a while. Ever since I got the K1C, uh, this one's been in a box. I didn't really have room for three printers in my house. So I haven't used it. But I'm gonna throw that out. Here it is. This is the new heat sink. It comes with a little bit of grease. It comes with the heat sink. Wow, that box was heavy. Let's put, oh, that's why there's stuff inside. It even comes with some tools and an instruction book. Hmm, I like it. Uh, actually, this instruction book is pretty decent. If you don't have a video to watch on how to replace this, you can get it done with this book. There is all the steps you need to do this K1 series nozzle upgrade kit. And you can see that I approve. I haven't even installed it yet and I already approve. Why? All right, here it is. That is the new hot end. And that nozzle here, I just got, happen to have uh, another one right here, brand new. You can see that's what the nozzle looks like out of the hot end. That's the, the K1C nozzle. It's a long, they call it the unicorn nozzle, super long integrated heat brake. Uh, hardened steel tip. It's a great nozzle. I love it. I have it on my K1C. And where can you get this nozzle? Well, I just happened to look it up on Amazon. And there you go. They call it the K1 Ceramic Upgrade. So, search for it on Amazon. You can get it. You get these tools with it. I didn't use them. Maybe you need that wrench if you're replacing the nozzle. Oh, I like the little wrench that comes with the machine anyway. And the nozzle super easy to replace on this upgraded kit. So there we go. Put the nozzle up into that hole. Put these screws into the top holes. See how I edited out my huge mistake when I put them in the wrong holes? No, I didn't make that mistake, that's for sure. And there, that's gonna hold it in while I put one in the other side. Pretty obvious what's going on here. I think you guys know where this is going. I'm not gonna I show you a video of the entire reassembly because basically you could watch this video in reverse now and figure out how to put it back together. So I'm going to show you how to get this nozzle and heat sink in, but then we're going to like super speed it up. Play some Roadrunner music and blast through this thing. Okay, so those two on the sides and then of course these two on the front now don't have to worry about the ones holding in the hot end because they're already there the sock is already on the silicone sock is already on the nozzle everything is already put together so it's really just these four screws to put it back together and then of course 
I'm gonna tighten these as tight as I can because there must be a reason that they were that tight. So I'm gonna make sure they're tight. So uh, there, there you have it. That is the K1 upgrade to a K1C nozzle. Uh, you can see I already have the camera installed too. I upgraded my K1 with the camera. So basically, now this is almost a K1C. I don't think it's got the carbon filter on the back. You can see it doesn't, but that doesn't really bother me that much. Yeah, there you go. Thank you for pointing that out, Kevin. Four screws, yes, we can count. All right, so we're at, uh, what, about 10 times the speed here. Um, my hands are gonna get in the way. I wasn't worried about the camera at this point because basically, like I said, you're gonna plug in the back of the circuit board. You know, put in those three screws, make sure they go through the holes on the fan so that they hold it nice and straight into the back and then plug in the front. You can see I've already got it plugged in the front there. Um, that could be done before or after, it doesn't really matter. So there you have it. All three screws are back in. We're ready to check on the extruder now. I'm gonna move the camera. All right, here is the extruder. And as I said before, you don't need that little blue PTFE tube um, because the top of this nozzle ends at the extruder. This is what I love about this nozzle. The extruder pushes it right into the nozzle. It is so great. When you're loading filament, you're going to notice a difference. So uh, you, you just push it straight through and into the nozzle and comes out the other end if it's heated. So, so we put the screws into the side of the extruder one on one side and two on the other. Now it's time to put the cover back on. Uh, that's super easy. Plug it in, uh, push it on. You know the drill. There's two little tabs at the top. This is super easy. You've done this many times probably, uh, especially if an early K1. <laughs> You've taken it apart a few times. Uh, I actually like taking it apart. You'll learn a lot. And then one screw on either side holding this cover on, and we are done. That is the upgrade. Uh, I sped it up so that we could get it done in 10 minutes or so, but uh, really this project didn't take me too long. I was uh, watching videos to see how to do it. Uh, now, because it's been sitting in a box for so long too, I wanted to do the input shaping. It's on a new table that's never been on before. It's It's been a while, so let's do the self-check input shaping and auto leveling and do that. And that's it. The upgrade is complete and I am super happy with it.